What up, fanboys and fangirls? This is Fanboy with an Opinion for May 2020. I am your fanboy, Eric. So we've got a pretty big show for you today. Uh, there is a segment I do with one of the other guys from the Gamerish Network, Michael. Uh, and that goes a little bit longer than I would have liked it to. But that's okay. Um, we're going to be talking about what I played within this past month, what I've watched. Uh, talk about some new shows, do the segment with Michael, and then I'm going to talk about the Flash Flash uh, season finale. Uh, let's start this off. I'm going to do something a little bit different, start this off with plugs first. So now, as you are listening to me, I am uh, we, Gamerish Network, is now on YouTube. So find us on uh, Gamerish Network on YouTube. Uh, don't forget, we have an email address, gamerish537 at gmail.com. There's a plethora of shows on the Gamerish Network. Uh, I have another show called Fanboys Book Club where I yabber on about books that I've read. Uh, we have a Gamerish group pod where everyone from the Gamerish Network talks about your favorite games and uh, things that are going on in the entertainment world. And there's also Michael's Pod, which is uh, shit I learned on uh, Animal Crossing, which is a game on the Switch that he's been playing. And every week he talks about what he's been learning. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So let's start it off with what I've been playing. So obviously I've been playing Animal Crossing as well, but talked about that a lot. So I'm not going to talk about that anymore. Uh, there's also Resident Evil 3, which I talked about in one of the gamerish uh, group pods. So you probably heard me yabber on about that. I was a big fan of the original Resident Evil series when they first came out. And I did love the, I really did like the remake. Uh, I found it interesting that Jill Valentine was redesigned to look more like Mila Jovovich from the movies, which I did not mention when I talked about it in the, in the Gamerish pod. But, uh, but yeah, I thought that was interesting. I kind of, I also played Resident Evil 2 Remake, and I kind of liked that a little bit better, only because I liked Kim Rish, um, Resident Evil 2 originally. Uh, but it was fun and definitely replayable, but I'm so stuck on Animal Crossing, I don't even know when I'm going to get back to those games. So, now I'm going to talk about what I've watched. Uh, I've watched a bunch of things this week, this month. Uh, and I wanted to spread my opinion about some of them. So one of the things I watched was this movie called Yesterday, which came out, I think, last year. And it's about, um, it's about a guy who wakes up. Well, he has an accident. And uh, when he recovers from the accident, he realizes that he's living in a world where no one, where the Beatles never existed. Uh, obviously the musical band, the Beatles. And, and other things too, he realizes that uh, Coca-Cola doesn't exist, Harry Potter doesn't exist, and maybe one or two other things. Oasis doesn't exist, which of course Oasis wouldn't exist if, if Beatles didn't. So I had a lot of problems with this movie, um, especially uh, the butterfly effect is really what I had a problem with, or their lack of. So if you don't have the Beatles, a lot of other things wouldn't exist, not just Oasis. You'd have issues with uh, other bands that were influenced. I mean, just about every band that came out after the Beatles was in some way influenced by them. You have that rivalry with the, the Rolling Stones. That wouldn't exist. Uh, Paul McCarthy's, you know, all their careers, but mostly Paul McCarthy went on to do other things that resonated in the world. Like, you know, he did a James Bond song. So where does that fit into the world now? Uh, the movie doesn't really focus on that. It focuses on this guy who then, you know, because no one's ever heard of the Beatles and he knows every song word for word, he then uses that to his advantage. And then it becomes popular off of it. And then it becomes a, a moral issue of a, whether or not he should uh, continue gaining success off of somebody else's work. But for me, 
it doesn't make sense. <laughs> I mean, just it just doesn't make sense. I mean, it would be the world would change would have changed. I mean, it's not like a, a huge change where like if religion didn't exist or or money didn't exist or something like that. But I just feel like there'd be more of of a ripple effect more than just well people don't know these songs and now i can sing them and make money off them. there's a little bit more to the to the story of course a lot of it has to do with uh love and, and romance and shit like that but it just wasn't i didn't care for it and uh, a lot of it had to do with the fact that it just didn't make sense uh, another movie I saw uh, this month was uh, It Chapter 2, which is obviously a sequel to It Chapter 1. And Michael and I talk about this a little bit in our segment coming up, but what I failed to mention was I didn't really care for Chapter 2. And I did like Chapter 1. I thought Chapter 1 was great. And there's a whole conversation about the original and all that stuff, so I'm not going to get into that here. But Two, I felt was lackluster. And one of the things I didn't care for was the kids. You know, they could have and should have filmed all their scenes for the first movie. And they just not used all of them. And then they could have used them for the second movie. It was atrocious. But um, they didn't. So what they ended up doing was shooting new scenes for chapter two and then just de-aging the kids because you know kids age uh, especially preteen teenagers so they've aged significantly especially in height and they had to make it that they still looked 12 13 when now these kids are like closer to 60 so that was cheesy and you know, you could have just done it all for the first movie. You have the second movie script already done, but it sounds like it could have been a logistic nightmare, maybe, but at the same time, it's better than what they have. Uh, also, I didn't think there were some good moments, but for the most part, it wasn't as scary as the first one. And uh, they changed the story, you know, because the first one was a little bit more... Uh, closer to the book, whereas the second one didn't really seem to be. They started it off as pretty close to the book, but then they kind of diverged a bit. Um, but, I mean, it was okay. I just had problems with it. and was not as good as the first one. Uh, another thing is my wife and I like to watch really shitty movies. So we heard about this movie, this 80s action movie called Never Too Young to Die. And what really reeled us in to watch in this movie was the cast. So first of all, it stars... Uh, Uncle Jesse uh, John Stamos, which trying to make him an action star in 1986 is just, should just, is the selling point, should be the selling point. But then if that wasn't good enough, the villain is played by Gene Simmons from Kiss, which he tried to be an actor in the 80s and failed, I wouldn't say miserably, but failed. And you can see why in this movie. What's interesting about this movie is that it tries to be a James Bond movie for the 80s. I mean, it's got a lot of the key elements that James Bond movies have. Gadgets, a, uh, a Bond girl by Vanity. Vanity basically plays another secret agent. She, she was a big, kind of big star in the 80s. She started off as a prince protege and then she kind of became an actress herself in one of my favorite movies uh, the last dragon but so you have a bond girl and then you have the villain and usually a bond villain was eccentric or had a niche you know uh gold finger like gold uh dr no uh was dr no he had like a claw hand or something. I don't, I'm confusing that with uh, Enter the Dragon. But he had something. Uh, the man with the golden gun had a golden gun and a third nipple. And um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, 
you know, then there's there's lackeys like Lockjaw and and hand job, I mean odd job, and um, so of course this movie also has an eccentric villain, which is played by Gene Simmons. He's a hermaphrodite because there's nothing as kooky as hermaphrodites, and Gene Simmons' character is just obviously over the top, but at the same time he's he's just. I guess because he's supposed to be both male and female, he just uh, oozes out sexuality. Uh, but it, it's just, it's a weird, and then he has like a horde of Mad Max, you know, Mad Max ripoffs. Like they're just an army of mostly men and some women, but mostly men who are hooked, on, you know, hooked on drugs. Because obviously it seems like that's how he reels them in and gets them to do what he wants. But then they look like Mad Max characters. Like, it's just, it's, it was really bad. <laughs> and what's funny about it being bad was because it had not real actors, but names and faces from the 80s. So it wasn't like they were all shitty actors it was more about the dialogue and the plot and some of the things that just happened in the movie that were terrible. Because if you watch 80s action movies with no names, and there are no names, it would be god-awful, mainly because of the acting. But you know, John Stamos, this is pre-Full uh, House fame, but he was still acting in soap operas. So he had some acting. Gene Simmons had done some movies. Vanity had done some movies. They weren't the best actors, but they could have been worse. But it's more of just like the setup, and uh, which is John Stamos has a father who is a secret agent, who he doesn't know is a secret agent, who of course is played by George Lazenby, who was a James Bond for one movie. And then of course, the father, George Lazenby, dies, and then uh, Stamos realizes that he's a secret agent, and Gene Simmons plays a bad guy who wants to poison the world's water. It's not even the world's water supply or the country's water supply. It's one dam. One dam isn't going to provide water for the entire United States. <laughs> but anyway, he wants to poison it. And hilarity ensues. It's a very over-the-top, horrible movie. And I recommend it. Because it's on Amazon Prime. And Amazon Prime is the home for shit movies. That's why I saw A Birdemic. That's why I saw uh, Hard to Kill. Is that what it's called? Hard to Kill? Some horrible 80s comedy, uh, action well, it is kind of a comedy. So yeah, I definitely recommend seeing that if you love the, the shitty movies. And then the last thing I want to talk about that I watched over the month, uh, I started watching Picard on CBS All Access. And I just watched the first two episodes. And uh, they're okay. Uh, once I'm done, I'm definitely going to review it here on the next episode. But uh, so far, okay. I'm a big fan of Next Generation. I uh, really do like Picard. He's, I mean, I'll get into it more next month, but he's definitely an evolving character, meaning he started off one way, but then evolves into something more. There's always this debate between who's a better captain, Picard and Kirk. And there were a lot of reasons why people felt Kirk was better than Picard, but then Picard kind of became those reasons. You know, the, the reasons why he was so much different than Kirk he kind of adapted into that a little bit. But uh, anyway, the, my biggest problem with the first two episodes so far of Picard is a lot of the plot beads remind me of Star Trek Discovery. Now, granted, it's the same creative team, pretty much, but um, it's just some of the things that are happening in the first two episodes. Like, for instance... Uh, the main villain is trying to seduce 
or is seducing one of the main characters because he needs something from her. We don't exactly know what in specifics, but it's like that's been done before in Discovery. Uh, there is a alien who went through a procedure to look like a human to then infiltrate, infiltrate Starfleet, which was done in Discovery. So I just feel like they're, they're kind of rehashing a lot of the same things they just did not that long ago. It's one thing if you have an episode from 20 years ago and you're rehashing ideas, uh, but you know there are a lot of connections from Picard to Next Generation, not just through characters, but through stories, story threads. And you could say that that's also rehashing. You could also say that's trying to invoke uh, nostalgic feelings. But I think it's just trying to bridge the, uh, the two shows together. Anyway, I'll definitely have a full review when, uh, when I'm done watching it. Uh, so before our segment uh, with Michael, I did want to get into some new TV shows that are coming out this fall, if they come out this fall. But they've already been released and talked about. I mean, obviously, there's going to be more TV shows, but it's just some new TV shows kind of caught my eye, and I wanted to make comments about them. Mostly the fact that all these, well, most of these shows I'm going to be talking about are either remakes or adaptations or continuations of adaptations. So first on CBS, they're going to be bringing back the TV show, The Equalizer, which was a show in the 80s and uh, became two movies with uh, Denzel. So why bring this back to TV so soon after the movies? I mean, obviously this TV show is not going to star Denzel. In fact, it's going to star Queen Latifah which is a weird choice. Uh, but, I mean, is this really needed? No. But, as I'm going to say to all these entries, Hollywood is running out of ideas. So the second show that CBS is going to introduce is Clarice. And now if anyone uh, knows or is familiar with that name, yes, it is a reference to Science of the Lambs character. So just like Hannibal kind of reimagined Hannibal, uh, Clarice is going to re, uh, fill in the gaps between what happened after Silence of the Lambs and I guess, I don't even know if the movie Hannibal or the book Hannibal is going to be in this continuity, probably not, but it's going to take place after Silence of the Lambs and what happens to her career. Uh, I just find it interesting because one of the showrunners is partners work partners with the showrunner from Hannibal. So, again, do we need this? No, probably not. But Hollywood is running out of ideas. And then we move on over to the CW. And they're making another Superman show called Superman and Lois. So it's going to be about the relationship between Superman and Lois because we've never had a TV show like that before. And I just find it interesting that there are so many other characters that you could take from these shows and give them spin-offs. Do we really need another Superman show? Uh, mind you, with Lois? No. But again, Hollywood is running out of ideas. But it would have been nice to have seen some of the other characters um, get their own spin-off. You know, people on The Flash are looking to leave. You could have given one of them their own show. I'm trying to think, I had this conversation with a friend. I'm trying to remember what his suggestion was. Um, well, first we need a Legion show. That's, that's what he had said, and I agree. So you could do a show about the Legion, uh, which was mentioned in Supergirl. You could make a show about the Luthers, uh, which would be interesting, which is also something my friend mentioned. And uh, I just feel like there's just so much more you can do than just rehashing the Superman and Lois idea. And speaking of rehashing, the CW is also remaking Walker, Texas Ranger, which is just called Walker. And it's going to star one of the dopes from Supernatural. So, okay. 
and I uh, what I find really interesting about this is so originally Texas Ch uh, Walker Texas Ranger was on CBS, which at the time and arguably still today was a network for older viewers. <laughs> Putting it mildly, uh, a lot of the shows had were targeted for older people, and so now the ironic thing is it's being remade for CW, which is not for older people. CW is mostly for a uh, younger generation, and just like CBS, uh, CW has been for younger people for quite some time. So they're taking the TV show that was mostly for older people and then reinventing it for younger people by taking it from a channel for older people and putting it on a channel for younger people. I think that's funny. Uh, it's very interesting though to see how they're going to update it and how they're going to change it because Walker Texas Ranger ended up becoming just a joke uh, after a while. It was on for a long time, too long. And people just watch that show just to laugh at it because of how awful it is. So it'd be interesting to see, and that's always been my take on remakes, is instead of taking something that's beloved and trying to make even more money off of it, take something that was shitty and then make it better. Uh, and then the less I talk about Young Rock, the better, which is allegedly about a show about The Rock, who, um, you know, I'm going to say I don't like which is a controversial statement, I'm sure, but I don't care for The Rock. Okay, so, oh, uh, yeah. So now we're going to go segment with Michael. And it's basically going to be talking about him and uh, getting to know him a little bit more and getting to see what he likes and kind of discussing it. So that... What are we doing? So that segment is going to be coming at you right now. What's up, everyone? So this is a segment that I promised. I am here with Michael, also known as Captain BD. What's up? Hello, Internet. <laughs> so uh, Michael joined the Gamerish Network a few months ago, and I noticed two things. I noticed that uh, him and I, we... Um, have similar tastes but at the same time we also have similar distastes or i should say we're don't uh we don't always gel in in what we uh love uh so one of the things uh one of the things in the beginning was andre had posted an article about uh the movie the thing and you had made a comment that <laughs> you didn't think the uh oh you know i forgot to fuck i forgot to say the i forgot to say the name of the segment i was gonna call this why michael is wrong <laughs> all right that's but that's 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 good that's good i like it and i wanted to start off with uh you know you made a comment that you thought that the uh special effects in the thing were cheesy which i was like what i did use that word um i will say dated Okay, so I wanted to know what, why you thought they were dated. Well, that was, I guess, my first question. Why do you think they were dated? Um, man, even back then, I felt like in Indiana Jones and different movies had better special effects. Okay. Um, so, and you got to think, what was that? When was the thing? 80, what? 84, 80, 85? Uh, yeah, yeah. 85? Yeah. Yeah. So shit, man, not that much longer after that. What well, we got six, seven years and you got Terminator 2, you've got Jurassic Park coming out. I mean, we have movies with fantastic special effects, just yeah. just a little bit older than a toddler away, you know? So, okay, so the, the part that really stuck out with me about The Thing, and The Thing is a good movie. The Thing's an mm -hmm. excellent Xbox video game. It's a, that, I did yeah. say that well, it is an yeah. excellent video you game. You did, you did, yeah. Um, so I do like The Thing. I like Kurt Russell. So, okay, so everything that was just, like, sticky, you know what I mean? Everything that would, like, I don't know how else to put it, the gooey stuff, the sticky stuff. It honestly, like, do you remember being a kid and your mom would put 
makeup on you for Halloween and you'd like have like fake skin on you and that shit was yeah, just yeah. sticky. It reminded yeah. me, it was just like that whole movie was just like a shitload of that everywhere. <laughs> like paste just sticking up off of everything. All right. Um, I was going to ask you what movies you thought at that time period had good special effects, but you already mentioned uh, Indiana Jones. You, you do make a good point that a few years later, seven years later, we had. But um, what do you think of CGI? Like, what do you think between the war of CGI and practical effects? Um, we are, dude, just in the last, okay, so I'll, I'll throw you one back, okay? So I Am Legend, right? You just did a pod not too long ago about that. Yeah. So how, when was that movie? 2006, 2007? Something like that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Around then, the special effects didn't seem like it was that bad. Now, if you watch that movie, they are horrible. They are horrible special effects. Yeah. CGI. Um, the X Men movies from, uh, you know, the Brian. Uh, two th- yeah, Brian Singer, two thousand. Yeah. yeah. Those are bad. I mean, if you go back and watch them now, some of the the first Spider Man movies, if you go back and watch them, and back then they were amazing, and they were bad. Um, I like where CGI is at now, and I imagine in 10 years we'll probably look back and be like, man, that's really horrible, you know, Endgame and um, just shit, the last 22 Marvel movies really yeah. were all pretty excellent CGI. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um, um, so in the 80s, what I didn't like with the CGI is a lot of it, like the lights, um, the neon lights of like, you know, if you see a ghost or if you see like a spirit or yeah. something like the shit from Poltergeist and shit like that, like those type of special effects. There's, those are the ones that are, even though they're good movies, they're, they, they don't age very well at all. Yeah. I, I will admit Poltergeist is one of those movies where, yeah, they, some of the special effects, the CGI, or I don't really know what they were called, the uh, visual effects, I guess, mm-hmm. weren't that great. But some of the practical stuff, you know, actually, Poltergeist is a funny thing you should bring up because there's a scene where one of the paranormal, uh, whatever, detectives, he's eating their food and he starts ripping his face off. Yeah. And and as a kid, that scared the shit out of me. Yeah. But now it's like, oh, my God, it's so awful. Yeah, it is so awful. Um, but I still I, – I showed that movie to uh, my uh, – 14 year old niece and i think even though she thought it looked bad to her it was still gross yeah so it still kind of played its part what were we gonna say okay so like yeah like in indiana jones um definitely the one no that's 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 the first one that's right as the lost ark where they are shit where do they find the where does he which one's one of the Nazis and they, they fucking open up the ark at the end? That's right. Yeah, the first ark, one. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. when he turns around after they open up the ark and he sees the voice or he hears the voice of God or sees the voice of God and his face melts. Yeah. Like yeah. when I was a kid, I was like, Oh my God, like that looks horrible, you know? It's so yeah. it's so gross and scary and terrifying. Yeah. And now that's like, that's wax. <laughs> it's like a magic trick, right? Like yeah. you know what it is. And you're like, Yeah. Or uh, George Romero, <laughs> that, that uh, what is it, The Day of the Dead, when they're in the mall? Uh, Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead. And yeah. um, they just machete a zombie in, a, in the head. Yeah, right in the head. Like, those those practical effects. Like, I remember I was when I was a kid watching that, I'm like, I'm like oh, yeah, that's probably exactly what that looks like, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's there's a scene in Day of the Dead uh, where they, they rip off a guy's legs and... Uh, you know, it's all in one frame. So you see the legs pulled apart from his body. And I remember as a kid, like, being completely freaked out. You know, not freaked out, but just, like, mesmerized. Yeah. And now it's like, I, I think some of them still hold up because it's still pretty, uh, you know, it's pretty gross. Uh, but also at the same time, pretty well done. Yeah. But I, I, think it, I think it's in the eye of the beholder. You know, depending on, um, I mean, I see what you mean about the uh, I Am Legend, but to be honest, I always thought they looked like shit. <laughs> really? When the movie came out. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think they looked that great. But CGI is really touch and go, you know, because you're right. Oh, yeah. Like like Thanos or Thanos looks great, you mm-hmm. know. He really looks great. But 
at the same time, uh, another movie that comes out around the same time could uh, could look like crap. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think, like I said, it depends on who you are. And, and I think it helps if you grew up with the movie. Um, oh, man, you bring up the thing video game. I, I would love because when you mentioned it, I wanted to tell. Oh, man. Oh, fuck it. I'm going to tell it. So I love that game. Yeah. And what was great about it was you really didn't know who the the thing was mm-hmm. at what point. So at one point, you, you know, you'd have like uh, three other people in your team and they would all do something specific. And, and sometimes they changed and sometimes they would just die. So you had one guy following me and you go down the stairs and there's a door frame. And once I pass the door frame, I hear a noise and I turn around and he's turning into a yeah. monster or one of the things. So I realized, so I played it again and I would kill him before he went through the door frame, but he wasn't the thing yet. So they would say, you killed a human, you know, like what the hell is wrong with you? But I'd be like, but he was just about to turn into the thing. So it wasn't until he passed that doorway that he would turn into the thing. Anything before that, he was still human. Like he's literally <laughs> passing uh, a, a threshold and turning into the monster. So I would just like snipe him before he even went through the door. But then it would say, you killed the human. What's wrong with you? Um, yeah. Well, no, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, I, I, did, I never killed him too early, I think. Or if I did, I knew I was like, oh, shit. I waited just to kind of like actually see their arms getting a yeah. little bit distorted or something. You know what yeah. I mean? And then, but it was then, a yeah, great... then I'd pop him. It was a great scene because because he was behind you, you couldn't see him. So all you heard you heard the transformation, and that's uh, that's when you knew. Yeah, that's uh, a great game. It's like a yeah, shooter. It a game. It's a shooter. It's a it's like kind of like an explorer exploration. Not really exploration, but kind of like a detective. And then it's kind of like a horror game. It's just like it's there's so many elements that they threw in. There that were game. there were a lot of elements. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, beforehand, I had asked you like what for instance what your favorite movie was and i asked you for three you only told me one so the first, the only one you told me was the big lebowski so yeah. I, i'm not gonna disagree with that because obviously i love that movie as well but um tell me about like why you love the movie for all instance. right so when that movie came out is when as a young teenager i started getting with that devil's lettuce um <laughs> and like I'm watching it with my my buddy who's you know I mean he's obviously doing the same lettuce and um from the moment where they come in and grab him and throw his head into the toilet yeah right in the beginning <laughs> like, yeah. it was just a non-stop fucking like holding your stomach laughing so hard the entire movie yeah so everything about it I mean fucking Jeff Bridges was for a long time, I just figured that's how what Jeff, who Jeff Bridges was. He really I was. Just thought he yeah. was just that guy. Yeah, uh, that's funny because uh, I loved watching that movie when I got drunk. Yeah, which I don't know why. It was just uh, the I guess yeah because yeah, that, of uh, that would carry ahead. over too. That would carry over too. That would work too. Yeah, yeah, because of the subject matter. That's probably why. Yeah. Um, I watched that movie a lot of times. And then one time I watched it and I realized that this was like a detective story. Yeah. You know, like they, they took like the old 40s, 50s detective movies and they mm-hmm. just made it a stoner comedy. And I was just like, oh my God, this is fucking genius. Uh, but it, even though I love the movie, I, it still took me so long to realize that. I guess because I was always drunk when I was watching it. So yeah, those detective movies, they make really good comedies too. Yeah. Um, I, another one I was gonna lit. I was gonna say, but I'm not. I'm gonna keep that off my list. But I'm just gonna just say the name of it because it's a detective movie as well. Is with Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling, the uh, the good guys. Oh, the other guys. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the good guys. The good the guys. Good guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that movie's fucking oh, hilarious too. Yeah, I really like that movie too. And you're right. It is. Uh, yeah, but it's interesting because I guess for a long time they didn't think it could be used as a comedy, but. Yeah, there are some instances where they do that. Um, so what's another favorite movie of yours? All right, so I have two comp. So I have so many favorite movies. You know what I mean? It's really hard to 
to pick any of them. So what I tried to pick was something that if it came on TV, if I saw it on Netflix, if I saw it on Hulu, if I saw it on Sling, our cable or whatever, it's it's one of those times where you, you fucking hit it no matter what. You know what I mean? No, no. matter what, you're going to watch that movie. So I've got another comedy, and then I've got a Western that I know that oh, for a okay. fact that I watch every single time. So I'll just throw the Western out there, uh, Tombstone. I watch oh, it. Oh, wow. Okay. I watch it. You, I watch do, it. No, you do like Kurt Russell. Yeah, I do like Kurt uh-huh. Russell. Yeah, <laughs> So yeah, I uh, every time, man. Every every time that movie's on, I watch it, no matter where it's at in the movie. Interesting. Um, I love Don Kilmer in that movie. Yeah. He's he's great in that movie. Um, that's a good movie. That's probably one of the best westerns. Definitely, yeah. definitely considered one of the best westerns. Uh, well, again, I can't I can't dispute that. I I could see that. Yeah, I really like that movie. All right, what's the what's the third one? Uh, the other comedy, um, fucking um, Idiocracy. I have to watch it really? no matter what. No matter what, oh. whatever, whatever it's on, I got to see it. Um, nice. That movie is just like the walking, talking catchphrase. Yeah. Like, like, no matter what group of people you're with, you'll be like, if you're talking about something, you're like, hey, why come no tattoo? They'll be like, oh, fucking Idiocracy, man. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> Or I'm baiting, like, Mike, what are you doing? I'm baiting. <laughs> They'll be like, oh, shit, yeah, okay. Like, you always know who's seen that fucking movie because it's nothing but catchphrases. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good movie. Um, I'm trying to think. I remember the first time I watched it, I was like, this is fucking brilliant. I mean, it's – you're right. It's like – it's almost like a, a lowbrow comedy, but disguised as, like, kind of a smart comedy because mm-hmm. – uh of what it's talking about and we're kind of living that now which yeah we is are kind of funny and scary at the same time like just, listen, like... just no, listen to ahead. any commercial and listen to any fucking commercial yeah. it's all it's all big dick pills and hair hair loss yeah. shit for men that's yeah. all this shit is i remember i kept telling my wife while we were watching it uh this is so true <laughs> this is so true <laughs> yeah it's it's funny um i'm trying to think what else that you know also that to me is like an underrated comedy especially yeah because uh i don't think that many people i mean they show it on cable and stuff but i don't know how many people have really heard of it mm-hmm. um oh wow i'm actually surprised not surprised that i agree with it i'm just surprised that uh what do you like mm-hmm. westerns typically yeah yeah i grew up watching a lot of spaghettis with my dad oh okay okay yeah. um it's like good bad and the ugly isn't is one of my all-time favorites it's there's moments in that one that it didn't age well too you know yeah because it was in the 60s but i mean it's yeah. um yeah it's a great one uh hang them high fucking fistful yeah. of dollars they're all great um that's cool i'm just trying to think uh yeah, my father was a big into westerns he uh when i was a kid he made me watch uh the magnificent seven yeah and, uh, you know, as a typical kid, you go, I mean, I was, I was young. I must've been 24. No, I'm kidding. Um, like t- a 10 or 11. And, you know, you go in thinking this is boring. I fucking hate it. And at the end of it, you're like, that was so cool. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and that, that movie in particular, it was like, everyone in that movie is so fucking cool. Um, all right. So you gave me the one overrated movie which I swear to you, I was shocked when you said it. But I really want to know why you think this is overrated. And that is The Shawshank Redemption. Okay. So, and it's, right a, it's a good movie. It's a good movie. It's, it's considered one of the greatest movies. And that's the problem I have with it. Is it's not one of the fucking greatest movies. It's a good movie. But, like, I've seen it in lists above The Godfather, Godfather 2, at, at top of Gone with, the Wild, Gone with the Wind. You know what I mean? It, Wizard of Oz, on top of all of them, on top of all the fucking classics, there's Shawshank, like right, sitting right at the top. And it's good. It is. It's just not the greatest. And Okay. Um, you know, I can get behind that. I, I, I understand why you would say that, especially since you see that on lists with other movies that are definitely better, yeah. especially the ones you just mentioned. Uh, I remember when that movie came out, nobody saw it. 
<laughs> like yeah. nobody really saw it. And that movie literally became popular because of word of mouth. Yeah. Uh, in fact, my this is such a weird story, but my high school teacher told me to watch that movie. Oh, you gotta watch, and I didn't want to see it because it looked boring. And then I saw it, and it was like, this is amazing, you know. But the problem with the movie is a lot of it doesn't make any sense. Yes. And yes. my biggest problem is when uh, Tim Robbins climbs through the uh, pipe of shit. Yeah, the shill. Yeah, and it's like, he would die. He oh, would, yeah. like, people had fallen into, uh, what's it called? Get Seth crushed. Pools. And, but he would, like, people fall into cesspools and die from the stench. Yeah. So how would he not fucking die? From crawling through just a pipe full of shit with no ventilation. It, that part always bothered me. But and he's there are, what? Out, out of this wall, he's taking what, like a spoonful of shit every day? Yeah. Out yeah. to the yard? Yeah. I mean, how long would that fucking take? I mean, a long time. <laughs> how long would long that take? Time. Like, you didn't age that much in the movie, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, and then, like, when he, another thing was he takes the Bible and he puts the rock hammer in the Bible. Yeah. Like, how the fuck did he cut all those pages perfect uh -huh. for the rock file to fit right in? It just, I mean, I remember seeing it and kind of, you know, thinking that, but at the same time thinking it was, I mean, it's a well-done movie, but yeah, some of those other movies you mentioned are like kind of near perfect. So Godfather 2, you know what I mean? Way yeah. better than fucking Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. Actually, a quick question for you. Which is better, Godfather or Godfather 2? Godfather 2. Oh, wow. See, that's where the, I'm sorry, that's where the, the line gets drawn on the sand, because... Well, that's, that's think, just, that's when you got De Niro, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, but, the, oh, okay, but the problem is, that's the best part of the movie, is yeah. De Niro. Yeah. The, you know, Michael's part is kind of drawn out, a little boring, um, because one, I feel like one has memorable scenes, like, at least four or five, you know, you have the, the, um, the horse head, you have mm -hmm. him killing uh, the cop and the other gangster. Uh, you have her, uh, his first wife's car getting blown up. I'm trying to think. There's some real iconic scenes, though. Uh, oh, sneaking him out of the hospital, fucking. Yeah. Um, just grabbing yeah, that, the gun under the toilet to blow dude yes, away in the, the fucking restaurant. Yeah, it's a great movie. It's a great movie. But two, I feel like, is not as uh, as, I guess, memorable. Because, yeah, you're right, De Niro, but that's it. When they're in Cuba, that's cool. That's fucking a cool part of that movie. Um, yeah. When he goes up and he kisses him, I fucking know. I knew yeah, I know yeah, Fredo. I knew it was you. I knew it was you. Um, oh, when he dies. When Fredo yeah, dies. in the boat. But yeah. that it's kind of cool how they tied the history in of Cuba, too. Like, yeah. like they had to get out that night because after that, yeah. fucking Americans weren't welcomed anymore, yeah. you know? And like, yeah. It was just – I really like to. I like to a lot. No, I, like, I mean – it's 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 you know you know it's kind of relatable to like which one's better Star Wars or fucking um, Empire, yeah, yeah. And I pick Empire, but uh, yeah. I mean you're not gonna be I'm not gonna tell you you're wrong if you say Star right. Wars. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean they're both better than Godfather Three. Oh yeah, so. exactly. And fucking Return of the Jedi. Yeah, uh, but yeah. All right. So what is your second overrated movie? Um, all right, I'm gonna ask you if this counts. So, what about like made for TV movies? Like, uh, sure, yeah, put it in. That's fine. All right, so if like this is one that's is really popular with me, and it's probably really popular with you too, right? It's, it's popular with our age group, but fucking it with Tim. I Curry. knew it. I fucking knew it. <laughs> once you once you said made for TV, I don't know if you saw my face, but I waited because I knew it was coming. I really did. I knew it. All right, tell me why. Tim Curry's perfect, all right? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. The children actors are really fucking good. Yeah, they Jonathan are. Brandis is good. The Corey's yeah. good. They're really fucking good. The adult actors are fucking horseshit. <laughs> the, whole, okay. the whole adult acting period of that movie is just, like, laughable. That's so bad. I... I it trailer came out right my wife's a little bit younger than me she's five years younger than me so okay. she wasn't really big into all this the from back in the day when i was a kid i was fucking terrified of it yeah um so i'm like i bought it we went to the movie store i bought it i brought it home and she was like this is fucking stupid 
<laughs> okay. Um, I never thought about the adult actors being uh, terrible. I just always thought that that part was boring. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, you know, it's one of those things where, like, you don't want to admit something's not as good as you thought it was. Mm-hmm. Um, Because I love the TV movie. I mean, you know, like you said, I was a kid as well. I grew up on that. But um, the only redeemable part about the adult uh, or the second part of the miniseries is Tim Curry. Because when they first come into the town, he's still fucking scary. And there's some a lot of creepy shit that Mm -hmm. he does to them. Um, But um, my wife and I are both fans of it. And we bought it on uh, Blu-ray and we rewatched it. And every time it's on TV, we watch it. There's a scene where Harry Anderson, uh, one of the adults, goes into the library and he sees a Pennywise. And Pennywise drops the balloons and the balloons pop and there's blood on everybody. You can see some of the actors wince when the balloon pops yeah. and the, the blood gets on them. So it, I could definitely see where some of the cheesiness or, or the terrible acting comes in. Um, yeah, they're just not good. It's just like they spent all their money, which they probably did, on Tim Curry and the, and the children's stars that they had in that yeah. movie. Because there yeah. was quite a bit of star power. Well, I mean... But it's like, where did they get these fucking adult actors from? Yeah. <laughs> like, but, you know, it's <laughs> funny you should say that, because a lot of the adult actors were... Uh, and I made this comment to my wife one of the times we watched this. They're all TV stars. Yes. You know, you had John Ritter. John uh, Ritter. It was probably the most memorable, I thought. Yeah, yeah, and he was, I think he was probably the most uh, famous. Or yeah. pro- one of, uh, you had Harry Anderson, who was on TV. Um, you had John Boy from The Waltons, uh, the one who played uh, uh, the main, you know, the one with the, he ponytail. had the ponytail. He's yeah. the one I didn't like the most. Really? Yeah. Because um, he, was, he was on a TV show called The Waltons in the 70s. Uh, so he was another TV actor. I'm trying to think who else was. Uh, I'm feeling, uh, but yeah, I mean, you, I once read an. Do you remember the Stand TV movie? Uh, no, no. The, okay, so they had Stephen made a, King. T- yeah, yeah, they had made around that time, maybe a few years after. And the thing with the Stand is, you know, they said that it was unfilmable and it's like seventy thousand pages long. You know, it's like as big as the mm-hmm. Bible. And so it took them like over a week to film this series. It was like a week long. They had, I once read an article and it was done in the nineties that um, the whole thing was basically a flashback to the eighties because you had Molly Ringwald, you had Rob Lowe and I'm reading this and I'm thinking, oh my God, they're fucking right. That this is, uh, even though it's filmed in the 90s and it's uh, shown in the 90s, everything had 80s feel to it. Like they, they used the Brat Pack for it. Yeah, exa- exactly. So now that you're talking about it, it's almost like that's what they did with this. Yeah. Because a lot of those names I mentioned had TV shows in the 70s and the 80s. They weren't really that famous at that point, you know? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, except for probably Tim Curry was probably the only Jonathan Brandis power. was huge. Yeah, Jonathan Brandis was he was a big guy. Uh, Feldman was huge, actor. you know. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I totally understand what you're saying, how uh, how bad they were. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, I mean, again, like, you know, I've watched the, the new one. Uh, well, what did you think of the, the new one? I liked them. I loved them both. I loved both of them. The, the first one, the volume one or whatever it was, um, that one scared the shit out of me. When uh, yeah. when they're when they're in the garage and he just comes through, yeah. I yeah. I jumped on that one. Yeah, yeah that was that yeah, was a good one. Um, but still, you know, I guess it's just a special place in my heart for the yeah, the miniseries, and it but. is me too. I'll still watch it, but like yeah. you're watching it, and you're like, oh man, this is good, and then like they go to the adults, and I'm like, ah, oh. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, like wait, it, it'll get good again. Just hold on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what you were telling her? <laughs> yeah, like, I'm just, just hold wait, on. Just just, wait. They're almost done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, even as a kid or as a young adult, when that would come on, I would watch the first part, and then the second part would kind of be a little, eh, all right, you know. But whatever. Uh, all right, so what is your third one? Uh, Inception. Really? Yeah. So why why do you think it's overrated? 
Um, just because something's so convoluted, that doesn't make it good. You know what I mean? Just because it's just because it's so smart doesn't mean it is. Like <laughs> you mean something just because something comes off as being smart doesn't yeah. mean it actually is. Yeah, but I think people just got tricked. Yeah, well, that's what no one does. No one tricks you. Um, what did so is the ending a part of that feel? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, the end is. Yeah, uh, I do not. I'm not a big um, open ending, you know, ends kind of person. Like, I don't like ends that don't uh, tie everything up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, like, uh, I don't, I don't have to sit there, and I don't want to sit there for like two another two hours and think, what did that mean? Yeah. Or was he in the dream or was he not in the dream? I, I don't always like things laid out because it can work because that's how you talk about a movie at the end, you know, uh, after, afterwards when you're going home, you're like, oh, shit, that ending. Let's discuss that ending. But it was more like, like you said, a trick. And it was like, you know, can't you just fucking tell me? You know, I don't want to fucking sit there and think about it. And so I don't, do you think he was in the dream? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's the top the top was spinning, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was still spinning. But it but people argue that you can see it waver just a little bit. Oh, uh, okay. But I don't know. You know what? I was just like, I don't care. But <laughs> um I like the movie. I actually saw it on my birthday. So I did really like the movie. But that is what we say in the business, uh a one and done. Yes. You know, you watch it once, yes. and, and that's pretty much it. I mean, visually it was nice, but, yeah, it, it, I could see what you're saying. It's convoluted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The the scene where the, the van slowly goes Yes, down, and then and it shoots to the down. hallway, and then you can see them yeah. falling in the hallway. I'm like, I'm like, oh, come on. What the fuck is going? But they kept doing the van, and I was like, we get it. The van yeah. is in slow motion. And everything that happens in this world happens from the yeah. van. Everything in this yeah. world is tethered to that one, and it's our – or this dream to that dream and tethered to that dream. It's like, come the fuck on. Yeah. <laughs> the goddamn <laughs> dreams. <laughs> um, what do you think of uh, Christopher Nolan in general, though? Um, I like Nolan. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite Nolan movies is uh, The Prestige. Yes. Yes. I was going to say, and what, what was the other one that came out? Not Christopher Nolan, but the other fucking Prestige movie. Remember there was one that had... Oh, Hugh, uh, The Illusionist. The yeah. Illusionist. Hugh, yep. With uh, Ed Norton, yeah. Ed Norton, Ed Norton was in one, and um, Hugh was in one. Yeah, and, uh, uh, yeah, Batman and uh, Wolverine. Yeah. Uh, no, but every time the Prestige is on, I watch it because that that is a mind bender. Um, but the the only problem is, you know, it talks about magic, you know, magic, and then it ends with real magic, <laughs> basically. Yeah, Tesla. <laughs> yeah, so. I mean, it, it it tells you the whole, like the whole movie, it just tells you everything is a trick. Um, but then it ends with like science fiction. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of misleading in a way and also uh, contradictory. But I, I guess that was supposed to be the point. Uh, okay, one other thing I wanted to talk about was I had mentioned my overrated movie to you. And I love and, it. And you were like, I love this movie. So I do love I, I think Avatar is so overrated. So you had said, though, that what you loved about the movie was the visual. I do. Well, because it, it was one of the first movies that it was one of the first Blu-rays that I bought and was like, oh, shit, I can see the difference. You know what I mean? Like, I can mm-hmm. see so you said the that. high def. Yeah. Um, also, man, I really like Dances with Wolves, and it's just a fucking more colorful, better fucking visual aesthetic dances with wolves you know yeah but see oh uh, before I, I get into that did you see it in the theater originally no no i saw oh, okay. it at, at home on blu-ray on my ps3 oh, first time all I right saw it. because uh you know obviously the one thing that everyone talks about is the 3d and that you know you had to see it in the theater you had to see it in the 3d you know i was being told that the 3d was different you know all this bullshit um but um now, you're right about it being the Dances with Wolves. I mean, people have said Pocahontas. Uh, they even said this uh, animated movie called Fern Gully. But 
does that bother you though that a movie is not it's like what's the word i'm thinking of ripoff oh yeah ripoff it's a ripoff yeah but that doesn't bother you you know what bothers me it's fucking sam with what's his name sam um worthington worthington that fucking year that dude you couldn't get away from him yeah yeah and now yeah. he's just gone. <laughs> he is gone. <laughs> he is. He was in. Oh shit! He was in Terminator. Oh, yeah, no, he was in. Um, he was in that. He was in. Uh, fuck the the remake. Um, Clash of the Titans. Yeah, class. Both of them. Yeah, both of them. Unfortunately, uh-huh. he was in uh, Terminator. Yeah, and I feel like he was in something else, and then he just disappeared. Um, he was in the last thing. I can't remember the last thing he was in, but he wasn't starring in it. Oh, I, I saw him in a bullshit Netflix movie where he fucking I think might have been where he went crazy and he was looking for yes. his wife and yes. fucking yes. digging out some kid's organs, thinking it was his wife or yes. some shit. It reminded me of uh, uh, a Jodie Foster movie where she's looking for her kid in, on a plane, and yeah, everyone yeah, yeah, keeps yeah. Uh, telling her that she didn't bring the kid on the plane. Yeah, but she was, really did. Yeah, she really did. Um, he was in this movie called The Shack. I think it was The Shack, where it was like a religious uh, book yeah. that they turned into a movie. And, and I remember he was in the movie, and it was like, that's what you're reduced to? No? <laughs> he had uh, such a good year, dude. I was like, wow, this guy's like the next star, you know? Like, this yeah, is the next yeah. Guy. Yeah, they had mentioned, I remember that a lot of people talked about that. Um, all right, so the reason why I don't care for it. Uh, other than the fact that it's a ripoff, I think James Cameron, his ego got James the best Cameron. Of him. <laughs> Is that from South Park? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or have you seen a uh, Future Future Man? You ever watch that? Uh, no. They're uh, time. The... They're time traveling. It's on Hulu. Yeah. It's got the kid from uh, the fucking Catching Fire, or whatever the Hunger shit Games. Yeah. yeah. Paleo, pay, pedo bread or something. Pay, yeah. Peta. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but they've so in this tv show future man their their time traveling juice the space juice that they use for their contraptions is fucking cameroonian because it's invented by fucking james cameron that's awesome um yeah i mean ever since he told everyone at the academy awards to uh have a moment of silence for people who died on a boat 200 years prior. <laughs> I, I think he, he kind of, you know, got a little bit uh, uh, into himself. Yeah, no, he's um, very into himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think that he just kind of lost it, you know, because it's so fucked up because if you look at the trajectory of his career, I mean, Terminator, uh, you know, Aliens, uh, and I, I think a very underrated movie, of, especially of his, uh, The Abyss. I oh, love yeah, The Abyss. Is the great. Abyss. Um, and then he does Titanic, which, you know. No, I, I, didn't, I never it. liked it. Never oh, liked good. it. Good. A lot of people love it. I think uh, a lot of 14 year old girls loved it. But, um, but a lot of people do like that movie. But, and then Avatar just was like. I, uh, well, we I heard t- about it for what, fucking five years? How long did yeah. you hear about that fucking movie in production? Yeah. Just like now. Now, like now we're right on the two second and three. one. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, again, recently, uh, uh, Andre had posted an article, something about Avatar. The, the problem I have with it is, um, I have a lot of problems with it. Uh, I think it's <laughs> very, so first of all, I didn't really care for the CGI. I think the CGI is a little wonky. Yeah. Um, but I have an issue with CGI, which we've kind of touched on previously. But it's also the fact that the story, other than it being a ripoff, is just really dumb. <laughs> it is a ripoff. <laughs> it, uh, you know, like, okay, you can, like you said, uh, Dance with the Wolves, or even like some people have said Pocahontas. Put that aside. The fact that he has a twin that, you know, goes into this chamber that's only for his specific DNA. But then he happens to have another brother who's, you know, a twin. And then he could use the... Like, it makes no fucking sense. (laughs) And then the one thing that they're after is unattainium, which is the stupidest fucking name. Well, that's that's James Cameron. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Unattainium. Unattainium. Oh, my God. 
Um, and then how much money it made was worse only because it, it almost gave it like, um, what's the word? It almost gave it like, oh, it's such a great movie. Look how much money it's making, you know? And then it yeah. gets nominated. I don't even think it got nominated. But my biggest argument about it is it has no lasting power. Nobody really talks about it. No. Um, you I know, think I'll, Disney, I'll watch it every probably like three, four years or so. When Disney Plus came out and I saw it on Disney Plus, I was like, eh, yeah, I watched it. I wasn't really watching, kind of doing some housework and shit, you know what I mean? But I had it on. It's in the background. Uh, when Disney opened up, when Disney World opened up their Avatar Land, uh, which is not what it's called, but that's what I always refer to it as, uh, nobody fucking cared. And then when it opened, it did well. Don't get me wrong, it did well. Uh, and I went, uh, a year or two ago, I went and saw it. And it was beautiful. It's like really fucking yeah. beautiful. But there's no representation of the movie itself. <laughs> it's only like, welcome to Pandora. This is what Pandorians eat. <laughs> this is what the Naviv, this is what, you know, this is where they shit and this is where they live. But there's no representation in the movie. Like the story that takes place on the land takes, is supposed to be like years after the movie. Like, have you ever heard of an internet, uh, international po property having a theme park, but not really based on the movie? It's just based on the idea of the movie. Well, like they couldn't have like mascots or anything like that walking around. That'd be fucking terrifying. You but, know? Even, but even like... Uh, you know, so what are the exoskeleton suits that they use in the movie? Yeah, so what um, are they? Fucking eight foot, nine foot, nine foot tall, taller than that? Yeah, uh, which is also ripped off from aliens. Um, <laughs> so there's a guy in the suit, you know, at the park. And he's at the suit and he walks around and he moves around. And he's like, hey, I'm Joe and this is Pandora, you know, go fuck yourself. So he's not Sam Worthington. He's not even the doofy guy from Grandma's Boy. He's not even Sigourney Weaver. He's just some regular schmuck who's in the exoskeleton suit. So it's like you, could, you couldn't even get an actor to be like, hello, mate, I'm Sam Worthington, you know? So it just feels like there's a, there's a disconnect from the actual movie. It's just like the movie looks great. There are great character designs. Mm -hmm. Let's use that. But everything else could go fuck itself. And I think that just proves how not as popular as this. You know, because, like, I've seen articles where people say, Star Wars, everyone, you know, can't shut the fuck about Star Wars. You can't shut the fuck about Star Trek. No one talks about Avatar. No, not anymore, Anyone? no. Yeah, it doesn't have any legs. Definitely yeah. doesn't have any legs. So but at the I time, at the time it came out, though, like it was techno te technologically, it was it was advanced. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Uh, it was, and like I said, the three D, like people yeah. people kept talking about the three D. Um, but I just feel like, I mean, do you think we need sequels? No. Yeah. No. I mean, yeah. No. I just uh, I don't know that movie. Boils my blood. <laughs> no, because there's been movies that I thought did need sequels, and the sequels were horrible, and I wish we didn't get them, you know? Like what? Uh, the, the, the last two Star Wars. Yeah, you know, that's actually something I wanted to ask you about, um, was what, did you, what have you thought of the last, you know, the newer Star Wars movies? Um, I liked Awakens. And I think I liked Awakens more than I really truly like Awakens. I think I like Awakens for the wrong reasons. I think I like Awakens because the prequels were bad. Yeah. <laughs> and, That's a and good I was like, And I was like, all right, this is Abrams, you know what I mean? He fucking had a tutelage under, um, tutelage under fucking um, Spielberg. Like, this should be, this should be good. You know, Spielberg fucks with, with Lucas. Like, this should... This should be good, you know? Like, like anything's like it. better. It should be good. It should be good. Like, anything is better. And that one was pretty good. We had a female protagonist. Yeah. Um, I liked all of the actors. I really yeah. did. I liked them all. I liked all the actors in that fucking movie. Um, I really liked um, Poe Dameron. 
Yeah. A lot. A lot. Yeah. I like Isaac. Um, what's his face all together anyways? Yeah. It's like everybody in that movie has so much fucking sex appeal around that guy that like at any moment they could pop off and just fuck him. Every actor and, and fucking machine and animal. Yeah. They're all um, walking in their own puddles. Is yeah, what you're yeah. For him. Yeah. Yeah. He's got so much fucking vibe going on. All right. And then, so, so what, how did you, did you like Awakens? I did like Awakens. I thought it was a little bit of a nostalgia, mm-hmm. you know, like, uh, People say that it was a lot like uh, episode uh, four. Yeah, it, it was yep. a little, but I mean, it was in, it was enjoyable. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't hate it. And that's what this to me, what this last fucking trilogy did is it was just a reskin of the first trilogy. Every yeah. fucking movie. Yeah. So then the second one comes out. The <laughs> What a return of the no fucking I don't know fucking I really don't remember fucking Luke's back you know what I mean they should have just called it fucking Luke so that movie wasn't really that bad it it could have been pretty they all could have been good they all had their chance yeah um at the end like he didn't need to die no he didn't need to die. (laughs) <laughs> there was no reason for him to die and he died in a shitty way yeah um, and that's when they started throwing in the notion that Leia's a Jedi yeah which fucking we hit you know what I mean when she fucking force pulled herself to the ship and we had to be none of us saw that shit coming you no. know she's never been a, she talked to him once from fucking far far away but that for all we know that could have been Luke doing that shit you know yeah. In the first trilogy. But so the second one, did you like the second one? No. Is that one probably your, that one like your least favorite? Yeah, I would say least favorite. Um, I, I did want to say, though, I agree with you that um, all the new characters, I really do like them. Yeah. Uh, I like their chemistry. I, I just, I like their characterization. I love that uh, Finn, you know, this idea that he's a stormtrooper and he mm-hmm. doesn't really want to be. You know, because like a lot of uh, cultures do that, like, uh, you know, like um, armies or guerrillas will take children from villages and mm-hmm. just train them as soldiers. And, and that's kind of what happened to him. So it was an interesting idea. I really, really like those, I think, are the strong points of the movies is those uh, newer characters. But then everything else kind of just <laughs> ripped off. off, ripped off from the second movie of the first trilogy. Yeah, you know, instead of Luke going and training with Yoda to learn how to become a fucking yeah, yeah. Jedi, now Ray's training with Luke, and she's going to become a fucking Jedi. And Luke didn't finish his fucking training because he shot off to go save his friends, right? To ultimately get fucking beat, and that's the same exact fucking thing that happened in this goddamn movie. Yeah, yeah. And then what did you think of the third one? It was just a mess. It was just a cluttered fucking throw three movies into one mess. Um, yeah. <laughs> it it yeah. seemed like, to me, it, it seemed like they, they were sprinting in every single fucking frame. In every single scene, they were just running towards the next scene. <sighs> yeah. Um, uh, action was awesome. Yeah. I didn't like the new... There's just so many, like, are we fucking playing Highlander rules now? Like, like, like now they get all the powers from everybody from the dark side of the force. And he's still, since he's the last person of the dark side of the force, he has all the dark side powers and yeah. fucking over here on the light side. Since she's the last person, she has all the fucking powers from everyone else before her. And I'm like, what is fucking Highlander? Like, and then now they can just physically give each other shit. Fucking like telekinesis or whatever through the fucking force they can just like here's a lightsaber you know what i mean like what the fuck yeah yeah um i i did like the third one um but i had issues with it like kylo ren just all of a sudden isn't bad anymore yep like that that didn't make sense like he was really evil and then he kind of regretted killing his father even though that was two movies ago yeah and 
and now he's like, I thought him and Ray falling in love was interesting, mm -hmm. but also came out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. You know, because like in the second movie, it's not it's not really mentioned. Um, it's more he's just like trying to bring her to the dark side. They have love third... interests just fucked up in them in the in the whole series. Love yeah. interests. Like yeah. Finn could have went with Ray. Ray could have been with Finn. Yeah. Finn could have yeah. been with Poe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they yeah. that could have even fucking happened and it wouldn't have surprised Which a lot me. Of people, a lot of people wanted that. Yeah. Rose and Finn, that could have fucking happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's a oh, lot of shit of... that Yeah, no, uh, you're right. Well, what about Rose? Yeah, what about Rose? What did you think of Rose? I in the second movie I thought she maybe I thought they just dicked her and didn't give her any fucking any roles and no, no, no lines. What in the third one? Yeah, uh, but Broke that's up. because everyone fucking hates her for some reason. So what do you think? Oh shit! Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, you broke up a little bit. What did you? Uh... I said I liked her a lot in the first movie, or her first movie, the second movie. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That scene where she just lost her sister and fucking she just met Finn and like she, she's she's a good actress. She's a very good. Yeah. actress. I thought in the third movie they dicked her because she didn't. Oh yeah. She talked what like six words. I mean, I don't yeah. even think she had more than fucking two lines. Yeah. Um, and that's because everyone hated her for some reason. Yeah. And that's they were just like, okay, we're gonna uh, appease the uh, the angry fanboys. Uh, I mean, she was fine. Uh, I thought she was fine. Uh, there was nothing wrong with. I mean, like I never understood the backlash she got. Yeah. Because she was, a, you know, a good character. And, she, yeah, it was just, it didn't make sense uh, why everyone hated her. Um, hey, so when, when it was a surprise for you that um, that Kylo turned good, right? That was a surprise for me, too. But you knew, though, even even at that moment, you knew that that fucker was going to die. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, he's going to die. He can't live. Yeah. yeah. You know I mean, he's fucking murdered his own dad. He's murdered. He's murdered. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can have, I mean, there's movies where you have characters like that where they get redeemed, redeemed. Yeah. but, but yeah, at that point it was, it was already like the movie was clocked at three hours. Like, obviously it's too late for him to have that kind of arc. Um, but yeah, you knew he was going to die. Um, what, like, one of the problems I had with the, the new trilogy is the fact that Ray's uh, origin or her history was such a mystery all the way up until the end. Until it was like obvious. That, yeah. It was just so obnoxious because, you know, you're drawing this out. And you're obviously drawing this out because you want us to buy tickets to see who Ray's parents are. And then we find out it's, uh, you know, like Emperor. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. What did you think of that? What did you think of that reveal? I like I I hated I hated that it went to Palpatine and I hated that Palpatine had to be the bad guy in this movie because they didn't fucking even talk about that at all in the first two movies. Just nothing right. would have led you to believe. But right. he was fucking cool in the movie. That whole robot fucking arm shit that was yeah. like that shit was cool. It was dope. What um Yeah, what's his name? I can't remember the the bad guy in the other two movies, uh that was played by Andy Circus. He was like a red herring. Like you thought he might have been something more than what yeah. he was. And then all of a sudden he just fucking dies in the second movie and you're like, what what's going on? But um in the uh I've never read the Star Wars books, uh, you know, the ones that are supposed to take place after uh Jedi. Yeah, so there was like a whole series of books, and uh the storyline was that Palpatine didn't die. And that he cloned himself. And so Luke becomes uh, Palpatine's apprentice. Okay. And so eventually Luke kills Palpatine. But Palpatine ends up using bodies, clones, that he's younger and, you know, uh, stronger physically anyway. And so when they revealed that it was, you know, Palpatine and Ray's, I was just like, you kind of got this from the books. All right. And I would have liked to have seen those books made into movies, but then they were like, no, no, Disney owns it now. It's all like, no, all that was retcon. Like, none of that was part of canon. Because those books were part of canon at one point. Mm -hmm. um, but now it's like, no, they're not in canon. 
but we're going to uh, steal some of the ideas. How'd you like the Jedi ghosts? Uh, it was weird. I, you know what? I'm trying to remember the, I need to watch the movie again. Um, but I was thinking about what you were saying, like taking power from all the dead Jedis <laughs> yeah. and like a montage of all the Jedis that we've seen. It was weird. And mm -hmm. I didn't know how to feel about it at the time. But I don't know. It's just, hey, they're better than the prequels, though, right? So. They are better. Oh, man. Revenge of the Sith isn't too bad. No, the, the, well, yeah. that's not saying much, though. I mean, it is. Hayden Christensen's just acting. It's just oh my God. awful. But the action oh, scenes, when he, when he cut fucking Dooku's head off like scissors with two yeah, lightsabers, yeah, like, that was the yeah. shit, you know? Yeah. Um, my wife and I sometimes like, well, first of all, we like watching bad movies. Yeah. We like watching yeah. shooting movies. I, I do, too. And um, sometimes they're Hollywood movies, because uh, those are fun. And sometimes they're just like real shit, like real shit. Um, so we sometimes like to play a game when it's Hollywood movies. We, uh, we like to play this game like whose fault is it? So why is a movie, why bad. has a movie yeah, become bad? And lots of times it's, um, you know, it's studio, studio uh, interference. Is, is a lot of the issue. But sometimes it's the acting, but you can't always blame the acting because there is a director. Yeah. And yeah. he or she is supposed to rein that shit in. Um, so for- Yeah, they could, they could have been like, hey, hey, Hayden, you sound like a bitch. Right. So- Put some balls in there. Who, buddy. exactly, who do you blame for the prequels? Uh, do you blame Lucas entirely? Yeah. I mean, you would have to because, you know, he picked- the actors, or mm -hmm. at least he was the one, the final uh, say in the actors. And, um, you know, the, it started with episode one because uh, Jake, what's his name, who plays Hanek uh, Anakin, is terrible. He's, He's terrible. a terrible child actor. He's terrible. And there are there's so many great child actors, mm -hmm. especially, I'm sure, at the time. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the reviews for episode one called him mannequin in skywalker <laughs> and i've always called him that because it was just awful but then he could redeem himself by getting somebody to play adult uh a vader and he gets hayden christensen who's a fucking awful actor no name just a no yeah, name no name at that point no name no name and i've heard people say well he's a good actor in other movies no he's not no, because no. he He's not really in any, any other movies. He's in Takers. That's probably his next biggest movie. He, or the I Am he, Four or whoever, the, one of those fucking kind of movies. I forget. The yeah. Jumper or whatever, something like jumper. that. Jumper, yeah, Jumper, Jumper. Like, yeah. eh. Um, <laughs> they're he, eh. he was in an independent movie called Shattered Glass. And it was a story about a uh, young writer who uh, lied. He was a uh, journalist. And he lied about everything he wrote about. Yeah. Uh, and he, he wrote for like a uh, political magazine. So he lied about everything. And it's a really good movie. Um, but uh, one of the things that he does constantly in that movie is he whines. Because that's all he whines. fucking does is he just whines. So that would be my exhibit A in that he always acts that way. He always mm -hmm. whines. So, I mean, again, you blame Lucas because Lucas should have said, uh, you know, stop well, Lucas, being a bitch. Lucas is, and, and once again, each of those movies had a redeeming factor to where it could have been so fucking good. Yeah. The first movie, you got Darth Maul, you got Ray Parker, who's just like one of the finest martial artists yeah. to be in movies on the planet. Yeah. And then um, fucking Liam Neeson was good. He was good. Yeah. And then you've got, um, you know, Obi-Wan carried those yeah. three fucking movies. Yeah. The second, yeah, I mean, and, well, and going. well, but yeah, then he gets Lloyd, and then he gets fucking um, now, Padme. She's she's excellent, but yeah. the relationship was fucking weird. Oh, it was. Weird. It was just fucking a weird relationship weird. the whole way through. Yeah, but instead of like sitting back and being like, "All right, man, let's not fuck these up," he's like, "It's Star Wars. They're gonna come. Like, who gives yeah. a shit? They're gonna yeah. come." The second movie especially, there are fucking holes in the second movie. 
uh, attack the clones that you could fucking park goddamn trailer tractors through. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Okay, when the, when they capture them all and they're at fucking the Bug Coliseum. Yeah. Now you're sitting down and you're like, you're thinking, well, goddamn, how many fucking bugs are there? It's like, there's got to be a lot of fucking bugs, right? Yeah. Like, there's your army. Like, Jesus Christ, it's right there. Like, fucking. Yeah. They all have guns. Like, what, they just don't want to fucking, they can't leave this planet. They don't want to. They're, like, how, how fast can they fucking reproduce other bugs? You know what I mean? They're fucking yeah. bugs. So right there. And, and then it just, I don't know, man. There's, there's, it's the, one of the most, that, the second movie is one, not only the worst Star Wars movie. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. You think it's worse than episode one? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 See, it's like it's like a Godfather, yeah. uh, a Godfather, uh, God, uh, but, <laughs> but the other way. Reversed. Yeah. Because I think one is just it's awful. I mean, the, the, you were saying about special uh, CGI. It does oh, not hold up at all. Uh, with then, Padme, especially, it's like it's like you can almost see her ropes. Like you can damn near. No, not Padme. Really, the two, the fucking Kegon and. Um, God damn, I can't – Ewan. Like, you can see their fucking ropes. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, ropes, you can yeah, just yeah. totally – you know, you can't really – but you can – you're like, all right, yeah, he's on, he's on fucking ropes. Yeah. Like, it's... Although, the, I mean, I think that end scene, though, kind of re- – uh, doesn't redeem the movie. But it, it does make it a little bit oh, yeah. better to watch. Oh, it's one of the coolest lightsaber fights. Yeah. Maybe the coolest. Um. But that pod, the pod race scene is so fucking boring. <laughs> uh, it's just uh, the whole movie is pointless. Uh, quick story I've said this story before, but you've never heard it, so I'm gonna tell you. Uh, episode two, before it comes out, uh, the, the graphic novel, the trade paperback version, the comic book version of it comes out first. So mm-hmm. a lot of people didn't want to read it because it was gonna spoil the uh, the plot. I didn't care, so I read it. And I get to the scene where uh, Anakin tells Padme that he killed all the Sam people. Uh, you know, he, he even killed women and children. Yeah. And I saw this scene, I read the scene, and I thought, this is fucking amazing. Uh, this is really dark. Uh, you really get to see him slowly turn into Darth oh, Vader. Yeah. Obviously, this is the first, pin, the first points of him. Or, and then I thought, I literally thought, I cannot wait to see this on the screen. And when I saw it on the screen, I'm shit you not. I killed them all. I, like, I hate oh them. Oh my god! And not oh just them, not god. just the man. I couldn't fucking believe. like you took a moment where he was really like, this is supposed to be an actor's dream. This is supposed to be where we see him start to turn into Vader, and you just ruined it. Fucking just turned into a bitch. It. Just turned into a bitch. <laughs> Because I thought episode two would have been the redeeming uh, part of the, you know, one was so bad, but then two would have been better because you had a different actor and you're supposed to see him turn into Vader little by little. And then they just fucking ruined it. It was just like, oh, there's no hope. I just remember Jar Jar, so I don't know. Fucking uh, one, Charge. one might be better. One, one might be worse. One might be worse. Oh, dude, Jar Jar. I once went into a comic book store and the two guys who worked at the comic book store went on about the new uh, Star Wars series and talked about how episode one isn't that bad. And oh, I was like, yeah. I was like biting my lip and it was like bleeding down my chin and I was like, oh, fucker. You know, I, it's like one of those situations where you want to say something but then don't, um, you know, because you don't want to be rude. But the whole time they're like, oh, George Rowe wasn't that bad. He was kind of funny. I'm like, oh, motherfuckers. Obviously, they were younger. So yeah. what did they know? Um, uh, but yeah, that was great. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, but you're right. You know, I mean, three wasn't. Ah, they're all bad. Fuck at, th- at, so, the, at the end of three, when he's fucking fighting him and he's already he's totally lost his shit. And every fucking word that comes out of his mouth is, eh. Like that's that's <laughs> like the nails on the chalkboard. You did this to me. Like everything he fucking says, it's like oh, just ah. Oh. You're right. I you know I do want to uh, add 
to what you said uh, in the first in episode one when Anakin meets uh, Padme and she's like 20 and he's like six. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Yeah, that sticks what? with you every time. You're like, this is a yeah. fucking weird relationship, man. It's weird, man. Like, I don't even know if they were really uh, that five, five or six years, but just you put it in that context and you started it in that context. That's what we're always going to see. And she says it at one point in like two. She says uh, something about him being a little boy. Yeah, you'd always like, be a little I'm a man. To me. Yeah, he's like, I'm a yeah. man now. It's just, uh, whatever. All right. Uh, I think we've gone longer than I <laughs> wanted to. Uh, but uh, thank Hey, what you was so your much. favorite movie? Oh, shit. I didn't really think about it. Okay. Um, it's hard. It's hard to think about. It is. Uh, you know, my wife sometimes asks me and I say to her that I really don't have one specific one um, because I don't know. I think it's always in flux. Uh, it's always like, uh, I really love this movie. And then I'll be like, I love this movie. I usually like to say, um, I used to love The Crow. Yeah, Crow's good. Um, but um, I don't know if I've matured or uh, just... It's still one of my favorites, so yeah. that was always that was always my answer. So I'll definitely say that. Um, but yeah, so anyway, this is uh, this has been uh, why is Michael wrong? But it turns out he really wasn't that wrong. So so it was good. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, man, thank you. Here. I'm talking for two hours. Uh, don't forget to watch or listen to uh, Michael's podcast. Shit, I learned on Animal Crossing. Uh, all right, thanks again, man. Uh, yeah. Oh, we're definitely going to do this again. Okay. Hey, we should All do right. a music one sometime, too. All right. That's a good one. All right. All Thanks, right, man. man. Later. Bye. So that was the segment with Michael. Went long, like I said, but I think we were having a lot of fun, and it was, uh, it was interesting to get to know his taste and what he likes and what he doesn't like and kind of compare that with my own. So, like I said, now I want to talk about The Flash. I also wanted to talk about DC, uh, CW in general. Uh, Supergirl. Yeah, Supergirl is about to end the season this Sunday as well as Batwoman. So, I think once I watch those, I'm going to do a whole recap of the season. But so far, uh, I thought Batwoman had some good... I guess it's like up and down. It had good ups and it had some not so great downs. I think my biggest problem is uh, the character of Alice, who's just, they run, ran her into the ground this whole season. And I understand that seasons, uh, TV show seasons need a big bad as, as they're referred to, but it just was too much of her. As for Supergirl, that show really changed after Crisis. Uh, and not just because Lex Luthor became a major part of the show after Crisis. But I'll get into that more next week. What I really wanted to talk about was The Flash. Uh, the, re the season uh, of The Flash, which was extremely anticlimactic. The, the finale was very anticlimactic. First of all, when uh, my last show, I didn't talk about The Flash because it wasn't on. And it hadn't been on for four weeks. Four weeks it wasn't on. Then it comes back and we get like a bunch of episodes and then the season just ends. Now, I know all TV shows, most TV shows have been hurt because of COVID-19. And uh, especially The Flash, because I believe this season was 18 episodes. And that also goes for Supergirl and Batwoman. They're going to end their seasons, I believe, under 20. And most TV shows nowadays all go past 20. You know, I'm talking about TV shows that are on network, network TV shows. Except for show, you know, and there are exceptions like Black Lightning. Black Lightning ended, I think, at like 12 which, in my opinion, should be the average number of episodes per season. But when you have a show like The Flash or Supergirl or Batwoman that's constantly adding more and more storylines, you know, you need uh, 
20 or so episodes to explain everything. But we didn't get that this season, especially from The Flash. 18 episodes. So, because of that, most of the storylines did not get an ending. Uh, How do I even explain? So, a lot of things were happening, but mostly it was... uh, Flash's wife, Iris, was caught, was trapped in a mirror verse. So it was just like the regular universe, but everything was kind of uh, the opposite, I guess. I don't know. So for a long time, she was trying to get out of that. And there was a woman who was trapped in there with her, who, of course, ended up being bad. And she ended up being the main villain because the season didn't even start off with her. It was like halfway through that she was introduced. And the whole storyline with Iris being uh, trapped in the uh, mirrorverse was interesting, but at the same time dragged on. Uh, Let's see what else. Uh, There were other things going on, but that was kind of the, you know, where we were in the finale, trying to tie that all together. And then the woman escapes, but uh, Iris doesn't. And then the woman gets revenge on her husband, who she feels didn't help her while she was in the mirrorverse and all this other shit. And when she gets out, the the woman, Allegra, well, I don't know, that's not Allegra, Allegra someone else. When she finally gets out, that's pretty much the end of the the episode. It's like, well, Flash now has to get the team together and rescue Iris but season's over we don't see that iris is still stuck in the mirror universe mirror verse along with two other people it was so anticlimactic uh you know every season of flash they add more people more characters to team flash and this season they added two or three people onto the team. You know, you have the Harrison Wells doppelganger. You have, if we're mentioned, Allegra, um, Cisco's girlfriend, who was introduced last season, but I think she really became part of the team this season. There's also a guy named Chunk. Uh, I don't know if that's what he's referred to in the show, but that's what his name is in the comics, who creates like a black hole. And he was brought back a bunch of episodes after his origin episode or his original episode. And then he was just like, oh yeah, he's part of the team Flash and he has like a thing with the Flash and how the Flash is treating him a certain way and then they kind of mend everything and then Chunk just disappears. And the problem is you add more and more characters to this team and then they start to disappear, all of them. Look, I I said before, I know there are characters who want to leave the show. There are actors who want to leave the show. So they want to make the team big enough so they can replace those, uh, those characters. But everyone disappears. You know, Ralph, who I think is one of the more interesting characters in the show, will disappear for like four episodes in a row. He's got his own storyline going on. So you've got a big gap in that storyline. Caitlin, who, or Frost, who I didn't even realize was pregnant, was gone for a bunch of episodes. And then when she comes back, she's literally just sitting on a couch for the rest of the season. And I just realized that's because she was pregnant. Cisco too, he was gone. And even when he wasn't even in the season finale, which makes no sense other than the fact that, you know, COVID-19, meaning that he would have been in the finale, but because we have this, the shit floating around in the, in the sky. Uh, they couldn't film the finale they wanted to film, and he wasn't in it. But it's more than that. You know, even uh, some of the other new characters will just disappear. Some of the old staples will disappear. The, the character that I mentioned about Chunk uh, being in the team, it was just him and one other new person in Flash because everyone else just, was, just disappeared for whatever reason. I think there's too many people on the show and it's budget issues that for whatever reason, those characters aren't in that episode. 
or they want to highlight other episodes. You don't want to clog the frame with too many people and stop introducing them. You know, introduce somebody after the older uh, character has left. If Sisto's going to leave, then he leaves. Then you introduce somebody else. You don't introduce somebody while he's still there. Then you've got just way too many people. And then the thing comes up is like, well, some of those people may have other projects they want to do while they're filming The Flash. Like what? Like what could they be filming when they're missing a few episodes? You know, that's so quick. You know what I mean? Like how, what are they filming that's only going to take them a short amount of time? And this is something like porn, which is real quick to make. They, uh, you know, I, got, I get so bored watching The Flash that I would eventually just be playing Animal Crossing while I was watching the, the episodes. I just feel like a lot of, the second part of the season was a setup for a finale that didn't happen. It was really sad. And the show is really losing its viewers. I think it's losing steam. I think most of the CW shows are going down from year to year. And there was like a debate on whether Black Lightning was going to get renewed. Oh, well, they're losing their viewers. Fuck, Flash is losing their viewers. Flash is using, losing tons of fucking viewers. And that's still floating. I just, you know, the characters are dumb. Uh, Flash is dumb. Every fucking episode we have to have a heart to heart. They even, you know, they used to go into this hallway to have a heart to heart. They even called it. Eventually, they would call it the hallway conversation because they just did it so many fucking times. Anyway, uh, you know, it's it's always got to be Flash makes some dumb decision and he acts a certain way. And then he's got to learn his lesson and then he's got to have a heart to heart with somebody and then he. It, this was bad. This was bad. I mean, this was like writer's strike bad. If anyone's uh, old enough, even though it's not that long ago, where they had a writer's strike that killed, you know, every TV show. Like every TV show had to abruptly stop their season because the writer's strike ended up going on for months. And uh, if you notice, if you if you go back to der- certain TV shows and you look at their episode guides you'll notice that some episodes or some shows have less episodes in that season than other seasons because they had to cut production short i mean it killed heroes it it killed heroes uh season two it killed a lot of shows so i feel like that's what COVID 19 might be doing is they might be uh creatively killing these shows and then it's gonna hurt because then we have to wait two or three months to find, you know, it even said at the end of the episode, to be continued. There are shows that will have, you know, cliffhangers, but Flash typically doesn't do that. And if they do, it will be like, Flash has disappeared. Where did he go? We'll tell you next season. Not like, hey, here's the storyline we're leading up to. Up. We'll finish it next season. Wah, wah. Instead of just like taking a break and just showing up on the summer or I don't know. I felt like they could have, they wait. I mean, that's the reason why four weeks there were no Flash episodes because they waited. They wanted to write it out and see if they could finish the season in the allotted time. And I even said this in the last episode, like I didn't even know how they were going to end seasons because I guess it never came to me that they would just abruptly end it and be like, hey, remember all those storylines that we were leading up to? We'll finish them in three months. I think it's, I don't know. It's like an asterisk. Uh, But what are you going to do? COVID-19 has fucked a lot of people, I guess. Uh, That's it, though. I hope you enjoyed the show. This is Fanboy with an Opinion. Come back next month. We'll talk about other stuff. Uh, I hope you know I'll have a review for Super uh, Supergirl and Batwoman, which hopefully will end better than Flash did. Because let's be honest, that was fucking ridiculous how it ended. But I guess they felt like they didn't have a choice. You always have a choice. 
So next week, so see you next week. Don't forget, email, YouTube, like and subscribe, which I fucking should have said in the beginning of the video. But yeah, see you next week.